Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to another episode of Conversations with My Higher Self. Today we have a very important topic. This one has been a long time coming. This is one of the major topics for humanity. This one is about healing your relationship with your mother. As I was scanning the human collective prior to this, about 60% of humanity currently incarnated on planet Earth could use some pretty deep healing on their mother wound. About 70% of humanity could use deep healing around their father relationship. I think what that tells us is that parent slash child relationship is one of the core relationships as well as one of the core traumas on planet Earth today. And so I figured we're going to dive right in. Before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping items. If you're not meditating with me on our Sacred Universe podcast, I am inviting you to come join me. It is a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful shared collective space. It's growing incredibly fast. Yeah, um, we upload new meditations there every Sunday, uh, which is a perfect day to meditate. Why not? With the sun. So that's that's that. And then um, my book is out on Amazon. It's called 72 Keys to Manifestation or an Ancient Path of a Modern Day Alchemist. It is a very strong book. It is a very charged book. It's about the art of manifestation. It's all about abundance and attracting the life that you want. But it is above and beyond the law of attraction. It is a channeled book and it contains a lot of ancient wisdom, the wisdom that has been lost on planet Earth. And in this book, I attempt to re-anchor some of those learnings back into the collective consciousness. That's that. Why don't we dive right into the mother wound uh, and, and mother healing? Now, not everybody who needs healing around their relationship with their mother would describe the experience or the relationship that they have with their mother as a relationship that's wounded or broken. Now, there are various degrees of broken, but most of humanity has a version of a suboptimal relationship where, with their mother. Our relationship with our mother is a massive resource when it is a healed relationship, when it is a good relationship, when it is a harmonious relationship. Our relationship with our mother uh, really opens up our hearts to experiencing the world. Um, it opens our hearts to love. It enables us to express our feelings. Um, there is a lot that is connected to your personal relationship with your mother in your current life. If you have a deep set trauma around your mother, you may be inadvertently attracting certain experiences in your life that are less than optimal, that have seemingly nothing to do with your mother, and yet, and yet, your relationship with your mom is the root cause. So we're going to dive right in. One of the things that your mother gives you is a sense, or doesn't, right? <laughs> or like in the ideal world, if we're gonna have it any way we want, this is what your mother would be responsible for. She would give you this uh, feeling inside of being unconditionally loved. So your mother is a gateway to feeling unconditionally loved. As such, right, she opens up your heart portal and through that heart portal, you get to communicate with the rest of the universe, starting with nature and then going up to source consciousness, right? Because heart is such a great space for us to communicate from. It doesn't only have to be the crown or the third eye if we're talking to higher realms. That communication really, really starts with the heart. Our um, ability to attract and magnetize things to ourselves is also very correlated to our mother, as well as our propensity to repel things. So your relationship with your mother either enables you to attract things or is actively in the background repelling all the things that are good for you away from you. If we have a good relationship with our mother, we are able to build stronger relationships with others because mom is the first relationship that every human that comes to planet Earth has is with your mother. And make no mistake, it happens when you're still in the womb, way before you're born. You are so in tune to everything that your mother is feeling, is thinking. 
although this is not a part of this episode, but if you want to feel closer to your mom, I suggest doing a regression meditation. Uh, I'm not going to guide you exactly how to, like essentially this is not going to be a guided meditation, but I'll just tell you what you would do. You would want to rewind when you get in a meditative state, you would want to rewind your life back as if it was like a tape and uh, go back and you can go back in like chunks of five years or 10 years, uh, like jumping back um, eventually to find yourself inside of the mother's womb. And I want you to pay attention to how it feels to be inside of your mother's womb. I want you to pay attention to what you know to be true about your mother, what kind of human she is, because as a baby that lives inside of your mother's belly, you know so much about her. So that is probably the closest relationship a lot of you had with your mother. This is prior to the trauma. This is prior to the trauma of birth. This is prior to the trauma of conditioning, which is not to say that we don't come with our own version and our own set of traumatic experiences. But as far as this life is concerned, the womb state is the blank slate, which is why it is a blessed state indeed. And so I would like, once you're in there, like first feel the physicality of it. Like, how does it feel? Very often people report the feeling of safety. It's warm. They feel protected. Very often they feel loved with very few exceptions, right? This is still the stage where you get that unconditional love from your mother and her body. Because by, by the way, your mother and her body are not the same thing, right? In the same way that you are not your body and your body is not you. You are two different entities actually. And um, how do you know that? Um, if you ever choose to do this exercise, I probably mentioned it in a past episode, if you divide a piece of paper page into two parts and on the left, you write down the things that you love and on the, on the left and on the right, you, um, so on the left, write down the things that you love on the right, write down the things that your body loves. You would notice that those are very different things. And that's how you know you're not the same being. So your mother is not the same as her body, right? Because she's a soul and then she's a body. Uh, human bodies are actually really geared towards nurturing human female bodies are very geared towards nurturing the babies that are inside. So irrespective of how your mother felt about you, you would have still gotten the nurturing, loving care from the body of your mother. Just wanted to make that distinction. It is very important. I find it can be a very healing experience for you to listen in from this position of the little baby to that, to your mother's heartbeat. And as you tune into your mother's heartbeat, you can tune into her thoughts and her feelings. And you may choose to connect specifically to her thoughts about you. And very often you would notice that those are positive thoughts, that she's actually really excited to have you. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. So if this doesn't feel like a comfortable experience for you or you're learning something that you'd rather not be learning, you can always cut it short. But for a good 80, 85% of you, this is actually going to be a healing experience to be back in your mother's womb and reconnect with her uh, from a place of being unconditionally loved and supported and protected and not needing to be anything other than her baby to receive her attention, to receive sustenance, to receive nurturing care, attend, like all of that, all of the good things. So, but I digress, right? Going back, although this is a healing, a uh, really, really good healing exercise that always does help to go really far back in time. Uh, but there are other things that perhaps are even more helpful around healing your relationship with your mother. So first things first, I find, right, that most people draw their feminine side of their energies, or the feminine energies that run inside of their body, from obviously the female side of their lineage, specifically women on the female side of their lineage. As far as masculine energies, you draw that from the masculine side of your lineage, of your on the father's side. So if that makes sense, right? Despite the fact that you have two grandparents, two sets of grandparents, so two on your mom's side and two on your dad's side, they're not going to be donating the energy equally to you. So women would tend to donate their feminine energy to you if they are on your mother's side, and men would tend to donate more energy to you if they're on your father's side. 
So if you have a hard relationship with your mother, a bad relationship with your mother, and obviously if you do, you already know, like you already know most of you, right? This is not a blind spot. Either you have a good relationship with your mom or you don't. Either she hurt you as a child or she didn't. Either you felt loved and accepted by her as a child or you didn't. So if you are listening to this episode, most likely you are aligned to a mother trauma in one way or another. So here's what you need to know about the lineages. Lineages are like trees energetically. And you would be as the baby of the family at the very end of the tree, at the very top of the tree, if you will. So your ancestors are the roots, you're at the very top, the branches. And you would be located right alongside the tree trunk in the order that, in the order of birth. So essentially, it would be you at the very top. If you have children, there's going to be other, your kids, even further up that tree. And then there's going to be your mother underneath you and the grandmother underneath her and so on and so forth. Very often, I find that with children that experience a lot of trauma around their mother, they either choose to completely leave that lineage, like leave the tree, And it's almost like they are hovering next to that tree, but they're not of the tree. And the reason that that happens, by the way, this is very subconscious. It's a very subconscious process. But if you don't perceive your mother as safe and her energy as safe, then the whole lineage is not going to feel safe to you. Same thing may be true for your mother, for instance. It may be so that she never felt safe with her mom. And so she ended up stepping out of the tree. If this thing is not, if this pattern is not healed, you're going to have a lineage that has a tree trunk that is vertical and, and, you know, very normal tree trunk. And then you, you have a lot of people that are not living on the tree trunk, but are further and further away from it, which is not good news. Very often, traumas run in the family. Uh, there is some pattern without, within your family that you most likely are repeating. It's blueprints you're carrying within your DNA structure, as well as, um, you know, essentially in every cell in your body. So it is important to realign your lineage back to the tree. And it, the work starts with you. It always starts with you. So the first quick tip that I have for people that don't have a good relationship with your mother Find somebody else in your lineage on your mom's side, a woman. Ideally, your grandma, but uh, if it's not a grandma, if you don't have a good relationship with your grandma or never felt loved by her, you can skip your grandma and go to the woman prior to her, so her mother. You would notice, right, that essentially it will be very easy for you to connect with one of your female ancestors on your mother's side because very often when the let's say your mother or her mom, if they didn't have a good relationship with the lineage, they haven't been tapping into a tree. So by removing yourself from the tree, you're not tapping into its energies. What ends up happening? You are not taking the energy from the lineage that belongs to you. So there are all these pockets of energy that are sitting around and waiting for you to recalibrate yourself back into the fullness of your lineage. And very often, the keys to that energy are held by one of your female ancestors. So it may be easier to start coming back into the female side of your lineage by reconnecting with that ancestor. If you don't know specifically who it is and the closer they are to you, the better. Meaning like if it's grandma, it's ideal. Uh, If not grandma, then her mother. Don't go too far, too deep into the lineage. And first you would wanna really deeply connect with that woman. If you don't know who she is, just ask the universe to present you with a perfect female in your lineage that can help you heal. And here's what you would want to do. You would want to imagine that this woman, your grandma, I'll use your grandma as an example, but you catch my drift. You would imagine her standing in front of you in a meditative state. Close your eyes, obviously. Hold her hands, right? Palm to palm. Palm to palm connection is very, very important. You would place your palms underneath and she would place her palms over you. So you are in the receiving mode. If your your palms are below and hers are above you, she's giving you a receiving. So first you would feel 
a lot of warmth coming down the center of your palms. And then you would almost notice this golden energy. It's liquid gold. It looks like liquid gold from her palms coming into you. And this energy is going to start coursing through your body, kind of like being absorbed, like moving up your body, getting into every organ, every tissue, every sinew, every muscle, all of it. And you just want to start feeling what it, uh, what it is. Start allowing yourself to receive the female resource of your lineage, even if that comes in the form of one of your four mothers, one of your female ancestors. So it is really, really important to get that going. Um, what, uh, one of your, let's say in, in this case, your grandmother may have a message for you. So you would want to ask your grandma what her message is and listen to it. As soon as that is done, and you would want to spend five to 10 minutes here, you would notice if you did like a quick double take, if you did a quick check, you would notice that your body um, on the lineage, your figure moves closer to the trunk because now you're essentially moving back into the lineage instead of being removed from the lineage because you can get connected back into your lineage from any of your ancestors. It doesn't just have to be your mother. And I find that the healing of your relationship with your mother goes faster if you already reconnect with one of your female ancestors. Okay, that's that. Next. Your mother is responsible for your relationship with abundance, but not wealth because wealth and material things, a lot of that is your father energies, actually. With your mom, it's the wealth of a different kind. It is the abundance of great relationships, experiences, um, positive feelings, abundance of happiness. All of that is connected to your mother. And that is in your heart space. What I find with people that don't have a good relationship with their mother is their heart, heart is closed down. It's boarded up. It's protected. It's sealed off. And they don't really like... They, they're, they, they have a harder, harder time building bridges with others, building relationships with others, acknowledging their feelings saying I love you to people, meaning it. They have a much harder time with harmonious relationships. So very often they would either feel abandonment and so they would often get in like codependent relationships or they would get controlling and uh, manipulative, right? Because again, it's like a, a struggle. They don't, um, they don't always believe that they deserve the relationship and the love just because they are the way they are and they're beautiful snowflakes. So if you are looking to heal the relationship with your mother, you would start with a heart space. The most important thing to remember, let's, let's take a step back. I find there's a lot of powerlessness on planet Earth around the cards that you have been dealt with your family. A lot of people feel trapped in their families. A lot of people feel like they got stuck with these parents or got unlucky with a set of parents or somehow got punished with their, their set of parents. Or perhaps they weren't enough or good enough or just there was something wrong with them that their parents treated them the way they treated them. I will tell you this. Selecting your parents at soul level is one of the very first things you do. Essentially, it happens in the sequence. First, you select your mission. The end destination of what you want to do, what you want to accomplish as a soul. Second, you select your parents. Really, like you really select your parents before you select your significant other and before you select your children. Before you select your best friend, before you select pretty much anything. The country that you're going to be born. Why? Because planet Earth is a planet of conditioning. We are conditioned into a society. We're not born knowing all the rules, all the rules of the law, uh, of the land. And so we need to be conditioned into them. That is a part of the experience of planet Earth. It is known as a fact that your parents are your best bet at getting the right kind of conditioning. So your soul wants to be conditioned. Conditioned means accustomed and used to and actually 
enabled to function on planet Earth. So it's not only a bad thing. It's kind of like if you were, well, I don't know, if you were a game character uh, and you didn't know the rules of the game, it would be very hard for you to play. Like, what are you supposed to do? Run, fight, kill? Like, who knows? Same thing here. Like, you need conditioning. You need the set of rules to read and adjust to be able to understand the game called life. And your parents, because they have full access to your body for the first however many years of your life, and also they form a big chunk of your universe as a child, if not the entirety of it, they are the perfect teachers, mentors, as well as masters of conditioning <laughs> in order to be able to get you to where you're trying to go. The reason I'm telling you this is because you need to understand that no matter how bad your relationship with your mother was or is, you selected it exactly the way it was exactly the way it is. Why'd you do that? Because having her in your corner, in your corner, not against you. At soul level, your mother is never against you. She's for you. But she's a teacher. She's giving you a particular lesson. If you only knew how much love you have for your parents at soul level and how much on your page and on your side they are, you would not spend a day in your life a day in your life worrying that they did you wrong. And trust me, I'm saying this seeing the amount of trauma that your parents have caused you. This trauma is like a murky black ocean. It's so gooey and dark and, and hopeless and helpless. So I feel your pain. I really do. And yet you selected this particular parent to give you this particular flavor of pain. Why did you do that? Because that particular parent, both of them, in this particular case, your mother, was meant to be the exact kind of teacher you needed to get you, to propel you, to mold you into who you are today and to assist you to get to your promised land, which is your end game. So you should be asking yourself two questions. First, what is it that my mother made me and why does she have to make me this way in order to pursue my goals? And what is it helping me pursue? So what have I become thanks to my mom's conditioning? And once you understand that, feel gratitude. Feel gratitude. Because very often, especially if it's a hard incarnation and your parent had to be abusive, you probably had to do a lot of convincing at soul level for that soul to play such a nasty role and such a nasty trick on you. You know, like, yeah, you probably had some convincing to do. And, you know, there you have it. Like, you you, you, you convinced this, this being. She came here to be a mother, caused you trauma, and then you're like, you're a bad person, how dare you? And then all oh, the meantime, you were the one that asked her at soul level to do this exact thing to you. Do you know what I mean? The second thing is this. Understand that your mother was not born a perfect snowflake, unfortunately. What I mean by that is this. It is extremely hard to align with planet Earth right now. If you have absolutely nothing to heal around your parent-child relationship, extremely hard to align to planet Earth. So most souls that come here have an inherent trauma somewhere around parent-child relationship. So your mother came with trauma, just like you did. And so it is actually really important for you to understand her flavor of trauma before you judge. You can try to connect to her Akashic records. I did an episode on that, if that's helpful. Or, you know, if, if there is an opportunity for you to start talking to your mother about her flavor of trauma, that would be amazing, right? Does it take a particular kind of relationship? Do I know that not everybody's going to be able to do that? Yes, absolutely. But sometimes it is through hearing her out, hearing them out. Not from a position of judgment, but from a position of trying to understand how did they end, end up so hurt? What happened between them and their parents or siblings or grandparents or whoever caused that trauma, right? It may be helpful. By the way, you could even do that if your mother is no longer incarnated, if she's if she died, if she passed away, 
you can talk to her soul. That could also be a very healing experience. So I find that once you understand these two things, the first thing is that your mother was the way that she was because it serves you for no other reason. Not, she was not trying to be vindictive. She was not trying to abuse you, diminish you, abandon you, any of those things. She was playing a script that you wrote. Simple as that. So you either wrote her into that script to be a villain or a hero, but it's not her fault. You decided that that was going to be the case. And she said, I'm going to play a ball with you. So if you understand that, and if you also understand that she came here with trauma, and in fact, she requires your understanding and love just as much as you do hers, because love goes, goes both ways, you guys. So if you've never felt loved by your mother, I guarantee you, she's never felt loved by you. Love is a two-way street. I have never met two people in a relationship when one felt completely loved by the other and it didn't, you know, spill into the other, the other direction as well. So imagine how it has been for your mom to never feel loved by her kid or admired or understood or whatever she, like whatever you felt like you were missing from your mother, she was missing like the same thing or a similar thing from you. Because it's a mirror. You both were mirrors for each other, right? You both attracted each other and you were mirroring each other's lack onto one another. So have compassion, right? And so now I want you to imagine that your mother is standing in front of you. And knowing everything that you know now, wouldn't you look at her differently? Wouldn't you want to ask her for forgiveness? For making assumptions that she did things to hurt you? Or because she didn't care enough? because she didn't love you, right? Wouldn't you want to ask for forgiveness because you also did not understand her? And so I want you to imagine that your heart space is beginning to lit up and it's starting to expand. Your heart space is this beautiful emerald energy and it's starting to pulsate. And I want you to imagine that your mother in front of you, her heart is beginning to expand and pulsate with green emerald light as well. And I want you to imagine how the walls that you both have built around your hearts to protect them, to never build bridges so that to never get hurt. I want you to imagine, I want you to envision, I want you to see this world walls crumbling, the shell breaking, and beautiful emerald castle spring forth. No shell, no nothing, no protective layer. Bare. Glory is beautiful. So imagine there's like, instead of your heart, there's like a, this beautiful emerald castle in your heart, and then your mother has her castle, right? The castle of our heart is the place where love lives inside of our body. I want you to know that the reason that you attracted your mother into your life is actually because at soul level, she really does love you unconditionally, just like you've always wanted to be loved without the drama. And I want you to imagine that there is a figure eight that connects your two hearts, fusing them together. So it's one figure eight is looping around your emerald castle and the other loop of figure eight is looping around her castle. And then there's this emerald energy that's starting to course through in, a, in an eight figure eight pattern, back and forth and back and forth. And it almost like fuses your hearts together into one beautiful emerald space, infinite space space of love and I want you to feel how your heart is feeding your mother's heart how you're gently but generously giving her your emerald energy not expecting anything in return because if she loves you unconditionally you love her just as unconditionally and so you can just give her love not expect anything back 
But you would notice that the more you give her of your beautiful emerald light, she's starting to give it back to you. And so this movement along the figure eight goes on, this beautiful exchange. You may stop this recording to have a conversation with your mother in this meditation because it is really important for you to voice everything in this moment. You may start with how you used to feel in relationship to your mother. Talk to her about the ways she hurt you as a child. Talk to her about how you felt and the impact that her actions had on you. Even if that takes 20 minutes, get it off your chest. Because essentially, all of this baggage lives in your heart castle. Your heart castle has this dungeon. It's underneath, it's underground. And this dungeon is full with all kinds of grudges you've been holding for generations. And there is a separate cell in there that is reserved to all the grudges you've been holding against your mom. Go in there right now and pay attention to how much stuff, how much schmuck there is in that one cell. Literally, all kinds of things she forgot to do for you, things she said, things she didn't say, things she didn't do, all the blame, all of it. You remember every single thing, can you imagine? Even from your womb, you remember. And so I want you to imagine as you're in this dungeon, that there is this waterfall of pure white light that is just washing away everything in that little dungeon and just liberating you from all of this dirt, all of these baggage, all of these things that no longer belong and just are making your heart heavy and causing you all of the, to like causing you to relive all of that trauma. Who needs that? Allow it to leave your body. Allow yourself to finally be liberated, finally be free. You don't need any of that. It's time. You guys, this is the year of karmic release. It is time to release the karma with your mom. I swear to God, now is the time. The stars are on your side. They are aligned. We're in the portal of karmic release. You can do it now and ever. And so now that you've gotten rid of all of that clutter that you have been piling up for generations, you're able to finally come back and make peace with your mother. Tell her how much you love her. Tell her how much she means to you. Tell her that you acknowledge and recognize the impact that she had in your life. What are the things that you know to be true about you just because she was in your life? What are the things that you had to learn the hard way because she was your mother? And I'll answer this question for me, for you, and for her. Why is she the best mother you could have possibly asked for? Because make no mistake, that's exactly what she is. The best possible mother for you. You picked her from billions of options because she, from your perspective of your higher self, was the best. So why was she the best? Why she is still the best for you? There is an answer. Nothing is random in the universe and certainly not the person that became your mother, the soul that became your mother. And so once you make peace with her, once you forgive her, ask for forgiveness from her as well. And see how she reacts. Allow yourself to hug her and truly fuse your heart spaces together. There's one more thing that I want to tell you. And it's called the mother cord. The mother cord is an energetic structure slash physical structure. Well, at one point it's the umbilical cord. Um, that literally is your entry point. <laughs> into this planet, but also you're part of your mother's body and you get all your nurturing through the umbilical cord when you're in the womb. Obviously, when you're birthed, the umbilical cord gets cut. 
The energy channel that connects you to your mother, though, never gets cut. That is the one thing that always remains with you until the day that you die. Not the day that your mother dies, the way that you, the day that you die, right? So for as long as you remain alive up, up until the last breath that you take, you're going to have an energetic core that connects you to your mother. If you have a suboptimal relationship to your mother, that cord is either underdeveloped or it's not underdeveloped, meaning like it's narrower instead of broader. So its diameter is quite small, quite thin. Or it's not a continuous cord and there are holes in it or patches or like whole cutouts or sections of it missing. And so I want you to focus on your cord. By the way, it connects your belly button with your mother's belly button. I want you to see this cord of light. And I want you to pay attention to how large, how thick this cord is. The ideal thickness of this cord is about four to five inches in diameter. Four to five inches. 10 to 13 centimeters. If yours is narrower, I want you to expand it. Like imagine that they're like light, the energy of light, white light, yellow light, comes in and expands the diameter of the cord that connects your belly button with your mother's belly button. If you see chunks of the cord missing, remake them. Connect the dots. Enable the energy to flow continuously from your mother to you. Repair the cord. Cords can be damaged for many different reasons. From hurt, like hard words to certain emotions, traumatic experiences, just the lack of connection. The lack of connection when you don't feel connected to your, to your mother. Like, and I hear so many people say that. I just don't feel connected to her. I'm not even sure how like I'm hers. Like it makes no sense. That is always a sign that your cord, the mother cord, is in a suboptimal state because every single human baby is supposed to be connected to their ev like human mother with a cord. And there always needs to be energy coursing back and forth, mostly though from the mother to the baby because the mother is the donor. The baby is just unconditionally receiving. So once you repair the cord, allow yourself to receive. Some of you may have blockages right around your belly, belly area, like belly button area. And I'm seeing this and, and feeling this right now, even as I'm telling you. A lot of you have these like little pillows, like protective pillows, right around your belly button area. They are a few inches um, in diameter as well. So it's like a pillow of, I don't even know, it's like a sack of liquid on an energetic level that doesn't that prevents you from receiving anything it starts from receiving the energy from your mother but it goes as deep as receiving anything from the universe so you build this protective layers around you again because maybe it wasn't safe or because you didn't want to receive something from your mother whatever the reason was allow yourself to remove this little pillow that is constricting the flow of receiving just remove it Imagine your etheric hands, your energy hands, just like moving it out of the way. If you're, yes, I feel like a lot of you are doing this right. And so now I'm feeling this energy starting to course inside of your belly, like into your belly. Do you guys sense the difference? It's night and day different. Night and day different. Because your ability to receive starts with your ability to receive the energy and love of your mother. If you cannot receive that, you're going to have a hard time receiving anything. Anything from the universe that's not hard-earned. And even when it is hard-earned, you may still have a hard time receiving, you guys. That's a problem. It's never meant to be that way. And so as long as you keep receiving and just sending back gratitude, that's all you need. Send back gratitude to your mother, to the universe. That's all really that's needed. So the mother cord is really, really important. I know um, I have a lot of either current mothers or future mothers listening to this. If you worry 
that you're not going to be a good mother because your mother was not great or something. Here's one important thing to remember. You are going to be as good of a mother to your baby as your mother cord is strong. So if you invest the time to build and strengthen your mother cord with your child, your child is going to get nurturing, support, love, care from you, even if you are 10,000 miles away from your child and like literally don't see your child for like six months. I'm not saying that that's a recommended course. I'm not saying like, hey, be an absentee mom, but I'm just letting you know that energy is that powerful. And so if you're worried about not being a good mom, start working with your mother channel, mother cord. You're going to thank me later. I wanted to get some uh, questions from the collective. Now, I understand, let me preface it with this. Healing the mother wound could be a lifelong journey for some of you. I'm well aware that this episode does not even begin to scratch the surface of what you may need to heal. I'm extremely aware that you may have your own personal flavor of trauma. But we have to start somewhere. And we have to crawl before we run, you guys. And so I felt I'm better off doing this episode and at least covering the basics with you than not at all approaching this topic because it feels so insurmountable. So that being said, I would like to give a chance to the collective to ask me questions. Anything around the mother trauma or any uh, any clarifications on what we have been through today, as long as it serves the human collective, I'm ready to receive your question. What if I cannot forgive my mother? The question is, the comment rather. What if I cannot forgive my mother for what she has done to me? I don't even want to interact with her. How can I possibly heal this? You guys know me. I would never force you into healing. I would never force you into healing. That would be the silliest thing I could possibly be doing. It would be such a disservice. You have to be ready to receive the healing. You have to be willing. And so first and foremost, it is a planet of free will. So absolutely nobody can make you forgive your mother. But if you're asking the question of how can I possibly forgive her, it's because at soul level you recognize that it is the right thing for you to do, to eventually forgive your mother. That that is the eventual outcome of this path, in this life or next, in, or in 10,000 incarnations. Eventually, you're going to get to a place where you would need to forgive your mother. Because not forgiving her is equivalent to carrying a heavy, heavy, heavy weight all of your life, and not just this life, your future lives, and expecting that heavy weight to do harm to your mother that harmed you. It never works that way. Whatever weight that you carry harms you, not anybody else. So if you already are asking or resisting actively, because that's what you're actively doing, resisting dealing with it, I respect that. After all, I think you're perfect just the way you are. And if you're not ready for it, you're not ready for it. One day you will be. Whenever that is, no pressure. But just know that if you're experiencing this level of resistance, that means that the reward is so great for you on the other side that you have something to fight for here. A lot of liberation, a lot of freedom, an ability to finally feel light. But the good news about this type of healing is this. You don't have to talk to your physical mother if you don't want to. You don't have to saply ask her for any forgiveness or anything or demand forgiveness from her in the physical realm. That's the beauty of this. You get to do a lot of the energy work that's going to liberate you. There are many ways to heal trauma. This is just one, right? And I also find that maybe you're not ready to go all the way today. Maybe you're not ready to forgive your mother for everything, but maybe you can take that first step. Maybe you cannot release 100%, but can you release 10? Can you release 15%? What can you do today? 
Because every little bit that you work through shows you the next step, lights up your path a little bit more, right? So again, please respect your process too. And don't push yourself into healing if this doesn't feel right. But also know that if you follow my advice, if you follow the safe exercises and practices from this episode, you're going to experience so much healing and so much liberation that you're going to want to keep going. You're going to be DMing me, being like, what else can I do to keep healing my relationship with my mother? Trust me. So despite the fact that you think you're the one with resistance, the ones that are listening to me right now that feel that have the most resistance, actually, I believe you guys have the most acceptance of this because you're the ones that really know that this needs to be dealt with. You're the ones that know that this can no longer be brushed under the rug because your pain is just so great. Your pain is so great, it's the pink elephant in the room. In every single room that you are, it is the pink elephant. So how long are you going to pretend there is no pink elephant in the room? Or is the time now? I think you know the answer. I'm ready to receive another question from the collective. Anything that you're present to or anything I can clarify for you around this episode, around the relationship with your mother? The question is, how do I know that I have healed my relationship with my mother? Ooh, little perfectionist. <laughs> I really love it. So you would notice that if you do a lot of this healing work on the mental, emotional, and energetic level, you would notice that your physical relation with your mother also shifts like dramatically. That the, connect the connective space, if she's alive, that is, right? So which is not all of you. But the connective space that you share in the physical is going to start shifting. Her attitude to you may start shifting. And maybe smaller things, like if she never texted you before, all of a sudden she starts texting you or calling you. Or she starts maybe doing the opposite, like respecting your opinions, like it, whatever form or shape, right? You would start noticing that the things that you've always wanted her to do, all of a sudden she's doing, right? And so notice every time that there is these small shifts happening, right? Because she's going to heal through you as well. Because if you're healing your own trauma around her, then your whole tree is starting to heal, your whole ancestral tree. And so if your heart space is healed, her heart space is going to become healed. So she's going to start becoming a transformed woman and you're going to watch her transformation, make no mistake. There will be a before and after, you guys. There will be before and after for her and for you. And if she is no longer around, you may notice that the stronger you build, the, like the cords in the relationship with your mother, she becomes one of your spirit guides. And she may give you some of the best advice or she may give you some of the best symbols. You know, she may start coming to you in, in, in your dreams. You know, you will feel a big difference in before and after. But also, the flow is going to come back into your life. All of a sudden, your receiving is going to, uh, to multiply and amplify. All of a sudden, things that you had to work hard for, you know, you just get. Like little gifts from the universe and the people. You know, it'll start coming. You will notice a shift in your internal state as well. Your relationships overall are going to become more harmonious. So it's going to be a pretty apparent before and after, like I said. Now, is there such a thing as truly forever healed and then there is nothing that needs to be worked through? Probably not on planet Earth. So there's always another layer. There's always a way to go deeper, 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 closer, closer, closer to someone, right? Even like in the merging of the hearts, uh, when you merge, you try to merge your hearts and your mom's heart, there is no such thing as fully merged because there is the macro universe and there is the micro universe. And once you merge the two things together, that is going into your collective microverse, um, kind of like the inner, inner world. And you would notice that there is infinity there. So no matter how deep you intertwine the two hearts of you and your mom, that infinity is still, still infinite, right? So there is, like, essentially you're never done. But, but, 
can you be done to a level where like everything else beyond that level is such an incremental benefit that it's almost not noticeable? Yes, you can get there for sure. But like I said, it's a process and there's probably dozens upon dozens of healing modalities and practices I could give you to, you know, work through your mom relationships, but I just wanted to get us going to get us started. Um, I'll take one more question from the collective. Anything around the healing the mother relationship? Um, I'm ready to receive. The question is, how can I change my mother? Because I feel like in order for me to have a better relationship with her, she needs to change. I love you for asking this. Seriously, I do. It's a little bit of like, she's the problem and I'm not. <laughs> Which... <clears throat> Is not a framework that works too well in healing or works too well on planet Earth for that matter because everybody, including your mother, has a free will. And so it is completely up to her to not change. So in other words, you cannot change, you cannot force anybody into change and you cannot go, you know, around the world inflicting goodness on people and inflicting kindness on people, including your own mother. So you should start with the assumption that your mother will never change. She is the way she is, and she will forever remain the person that she is from this day onward. So the only person that gets to shift would be you, right? And that's the good news about karmic relationships. The knot originally is tied from both ends, but you can untie your part of the knot and be done. And if she hasn't tied her part of the knot, that's her problem with some other soul in the future. But you're no longer going to be tied to that, right? So start with you, is what I'm saying. Don't think that your healing depends on anyone other than you. It's not dependent on anyone or anything. You are in full control here. You're the director, the script writer, and the actor in your own movie. You don't require any outside participation for you to heal your mother's wound. Not really. You can do that all through spirit. Yeah. So don't you worry. You can have a great relationship with your mother and she can stay exactly the way she is. And that is the paradox. But you know what this is? This should give you hope. Because your healing is not predicated upon somebody else's cha changing. Your healing is not predicated upon taking somebody else's free will. You get to keep you, she gets to keep her, and you still get to be happy. You still get to get your closure. That is why we're approaching this not through therapy and not through talking things through for 5,000 hours. We're going straight to the root cause. The root, the root cause of everything is energy. Everything is energy. So if you only knew, you know, how the things, why, why things don't run a certain way, like if you knew about the mother cord, if you could have rebuilt your mother cord when you were five years old, you guys, you would not have accumulated 90% of your trauma around your mother. Hate to say this, maybe not 90, but a big chunk, right? Same thing goes about the heart, right? Heart space, heart connection, which is a way of communicating with your mom. All right. Well, you know, we shall see if we need a like a deep dive into this in a future episode. But for now, I really thank you for being here with me today in this healing space. I commend you for choosing to heal the relationship with your mother. I know you can do this. I believe it. And I have seen change in a lot of you, even through this, like the duration of this episode and just doing some of the practices with me. So I know you're well on your way and... You're just such a such a trooper for it, such a soldier, such a fighter, and you know, all the more power to you. I'll see you in the next episode.